Let's talk about the project that you just came back from Romania on. So tell us, what was your project? We were on Atlantis ROV team, which is um, an acronym for Remotely Operated Vehicle, or it, it was an underwater robot, basically. You girls built a robot? Yes. So uh, tell us about the robot. So we built the robot in three weeks before internationals, and then we took it with us to Romania. Um, because we're from a very small community, we're 100% community supported. We don't have a school behind us. We don't have like GM, for example, like some first robotics teams do. We built it out of plumbing pipe. You can find it at any hardware store. You can use bilge pump motors, which we used. You can use backup cameras from cars. You can use cookie cooling racks. We used a printer motor. There are all kinds of things you can do to build underwater robots, and ours was built with an emphasis on innovation because we didn't have a whole lot of resources or money available to us. So, so Haley, i got to ask you from the very beginning, what made you want to do this? Um, I've always been very un interested in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. When I was eight, I built a boat out of recycled materials and took it across the lake. Um, ROV was a, another branch of the STEM f STEAM field that I wanted to go into. I heard about it from a friend's older brother who was also doing it, and I'm like, oh, we should make our own team, and that's sort of how it began. Isn't this a math application, basically? Oh, yes. So are all of you girls really good at math? In fact, we built our own propellers a couple years ago, and we had to do a load of trigonometry for that as well. So it was cool to see math in its everyday application, because so often in school, your courses don't seem to have any relevance once you're done with your exam. Uh -huh. So where do you all go to school? Are you all just like super geniuses? I go to Southwood B Academy and Columbia Virtual Academy. I go to Southwood B High School and Southwood B Academy. And I go to Columbia Virtual Academy and I think the theme that's coming out here is making the education for the student. Yes. Yeah. All right. Help me understand it. Making the education for the student. What is the Virtual Academy? Um, it's basically a state-approved, certified school, and you have an advisor that you check in with every week, and they check up on your progress, but it gives you a lot more flexibility. For example, I've been taking college classes for a number of years, even though I don't graduate high school until this spring. They really look to make sure that maybe you need help with math, but you're great at English. They really try to make you know, a blend of classes that fits you and your strengths to make sure you're going to be a really successful person. The, I believe that um, virtual schools have much more flexibility than public school systems because the public school system has a specific curriculum to follow and if they don't, and if a particular student does not uh, understand a concept in one time, in a short period of time, well, sorry, we have to move on and they may not get it later um, and if that was an, a crucial element in the curriculum, then that, it's a domino effect, so that's something that I think is really cool about Virtual Academy. So you're in the Virtual Academy too, but also in another school? Yeah. I'm also in South Whidbey Academy. I'm taking two innovation classes of sorts, uh, underwater robotics as well as a class based off of the Lehman MIT Invent Team grant. Wow. I mean, I got to ask this, how old are you? I'm 14, 15 next month. I am 14. And I'm 17. Congratulations to you. But well, let's talk about Romania a little bit. First off, how did you hear about this international competition for robotics? We received an email in 2013, about a month before the competition, of, hey, do you want to come? It was a month before the competition, and we'd just gotten back from a different international competition, so we weren't quite ready to build another robot. However, they contacted us again this year, earlier, thankfully, and we got to compete. So what was really cool about it is that it was our first time competing in open water instead of some, you know, brightly lit, chlorinated, super clean pool, and that was really great. We got to go directly into the Black Sea, and we came out the winners, which was really wonderful. Annika? It, it, it was really cool. Um, it, was, it was definitely a new experience for me, not just going into open water, but ROVs. I mean, um, I've, they asked me to join the team in March, which was nine months ago, I believe. So it, I've had a huge learning curve. 
but it's a fantastic experience. So, I mean, the question that everybody's kind of wants me to ask is, what are you going to be when you grow up? Are you going to be like space pioneers again? Or are you going to be underwater? I am most likely going to be a marine engineer of sorts. Okay, you're underwater, okay. For a long time, I have wanted to go into a medical profession. Um, and now that I have learned a little bit about robotics, that makes me think, well, there is a robotics side of medical of medical profession. So that's a huge that opened a ton of doors for me that that I didn't know existed. So it's a that this opportunity is branching out into something I couldn't have um, I couldn't have foreseen. I want to get an MBA and I'm hoping that with marketing and all these communication skills I can really communicate effectively about not just maybe a product or a brand but also about why STEM education is important, why you really need to pull girls in early and why girls are getting pushed out. Okay, that's what that was my next last question was about that very thing. Um, I have two girls. You, you girls are inspirational to them. So help me understand how you girls have been able to do this when what you've described is a man's field. We definitely saw that a lot in Romania. Uh, um, we did several outreach events where there was just a little kiddie pool and we had mini robots that only went forward, backwards, up and down and left right. Um, and we would let anybody who wanted to try just let them fly the bot. So it was open to anybody, and we got quite a crowd sometimes. Um, but one thing that we noticed was that the parents would encourage their little their boys to do, "Hey, how about you pick this up? It sounds cool." But when we encouraged the girls, they would say, "Oh no, it's not her thing." So that was something that we were very surprised about, and that's. That's just something that has fueled us even more to get to just get girls as integrated with STEM as possible because they are not getting the opportunities that boys are. Haley, Hannah, do you see the same thing? I have seen the same thing, and it was definitely interesting showing up in Romania and having one of the first questions asked, actually by one of the organizers, was where are the boys? Did the boys help you build this? Oh my gosh! Did you hit them? I wanted to, but I was staying in one of their parents' apartments. So. I must say, it was very vindicating. We felt very justified when we won the competition. It was like, okay, well, we're the only all-girl team here. Hmm. We were actually the only girls competing in the high school division, and we got asked all the time if we had boyfriends or, you know, if the guys taught us how to do this. And I think really? that is super offensive, and it's why we need to give more visibility to the women already in STEM who are doing great stuff to inspire more girls to follow their example. And I think part of that is going to be dispelling this terrible stereotype that you can't be girly and a scientist or an engineer or something like that. I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan. I wear a lot of pink, and I'm really great at robotics, too. And those you know, facts shouldn't be surprising together. All right, so as we close up, what was the best thing about the entire thing? Was it your working together? Was it the trip? What was it? It was, for me, it was kind of getting a chance to see what we're up against and getting the inspiration to do even more. Um, it was definitely great having the teamwork. It sort of becomes a family after a long time. Like, of course, you'll have tips because that's what families do. <laughs> but you have this inseparable bond after you've been working together for so long. And I think that's something I've gleaned from all of this. We were interviewed by the Seattle Times a couple months ago and they brought up that girls have this terrible reputation of being very catty to each other, especially when it's an all-girl group. And I think that's one of the things we're trying to dispel. And it's great that because of the competition, we have a much broader you know, outlet and platform to say stuff like that from, you know, to inform people that these stereotypes are rampant and they're a huge problem. Well, congratulations to you all and uh, good luck for your future. Thank you. Rainmaker believes we can change the world. One life, one heart, one soul, one mind at a time. Rainmaker believes we can change the world.
can chase 